Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make a white sandwich bread and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it has a beautiful golden brown crust that's kind of flaky and a little soft. And then the, the inside of this bread, the texture is so good. It's soft, it's fluffy. And as the name of the bread implies, it is perfect for making sandwiches or toast or just on its own. So, um, as you know, a white sandwich bread, what it, I mean, the texture is great, but you know, it does lack a little bit in flavor. So what I like to do is make what is called a pre-ferment or a starter. So uh, in a medium sized bowl, I have one and three quarter cups, which is 235 grams of bread flour. I like to use an unbleached bread flour. And as always, you know, if you can get a digital scale and weigh your dry ingredients, or you can weigh all your ingredients, but especially things like flour, because when you put it in the cup, it depends how you put your flour into the cup. And you know, it can be, the amount can vary, where if you weigh it, it's always perfect. So, um, and then what we're going to add is one and a quarter teaspoons, which is five grams of kosher salt. And then we need a little bit of yeast because what we're really doing here is just making like a little bit of the bread dough. So I'm adding um, one, a half a teaspoon, which is one gram. I'm, I'm using an SAF uh, gold instant use yeast. Sorry, <laughs> you could use the red and it's, you know, professionals use this yeast and it's really great because we don't have to proof it and we just mix it right in. And it's also, it gives a really nice rise to our bread. So that's all you need. And then I'm just gonna use my hand to mix that all together. And the, the last ingredient that we need is just water. I'm using cold water, uh, two thirds of a cup, 150 grams of cold water. And you may say, you use warm water. But the reason I'm using cold, and then just make a well in the center, and then I'm just going to pour my water in. The reason I'm using cold is we want the final dough that we're making here to be at room temperature. So that would be, you know, somewhere around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 25, 24 degrees C. And, you know, we're going to mix the dough and it warms it up. So that's why I'm starting with uh, cold water. And I like to use filtered water. And so I'm just using uh, one of these rubber scrapers to mix this, the ingredients together. You could use, you know, a wooden spoon, a rubber spatula, your hands. <laughs> so now we are going to make, I make the pre-ferment the night before. So normally I make my bread in the morning. So before I go to bed, I make this pre-ferment because I, you know, it should sit in the refrigerator for about, you know, 12 hours. So, you know, the night before. Okay. And why do I do a pre ferment? Like I said, it does add flavor, but it also adds texture to our bread. So, I'm just kind of mix that all together. Pretty simple. I mean, you could pull, pull out your mixer, but really, <laughs> it only takes a second. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no dry spots and that is it. So now what we're going to do, it's kind of a two stage thing. I'm just going to, I have a bowl here, just put a little oil, flavorless oil. By that, you know, you can use uh, corn or vegetable or canola or even a light olive oil. And I just use paper towel. And then I just take my pre-ferment and I put it like that. And then I flip it over so that there's a bit of the oil on the dough that prevents it from drying out. So now what I'm going to do is just cover it with plastic wrap. Now, what you want to do is just let this sit on your counter for an hour and then just put it into the refrigerator overnight. So it gets nice and cold and then we'll be all set to uh, make our white sandwich bread dough the next day. So we are now ready to make our bread dough. So in a large bowl, I have five and a half cups, which is 715 grams of unbleached bread flour. 
And then I'm going to add to that a half a cup, 65 grams of a unbleached all-purpose flour, or you may know that as a plain flour. I just like a little bit of all-purpose flour in there. You could use all bread flour if you prefer. And then we, this is a slightly sweet bread. So I am going to add three tablespoons, 40 grams of granulated white sugar. And then I'm going to use some dried milk powder, about a scant half a cup, which is 40 grams of that. And, and the reason we're adding this is one, it gives us that really, helps to give us a really nice brown um, outer crust color, and it also adds some flavor. And it also keeps our bread moist because this bread actually um, stays fresh for two, three days. And then I'm going, salt, we need some salt for flavor. Uh, so I'm adding three and three quarter teaspoons, which is 15 grams of kosher salt. And of course we need some yeast. I'm adding two teaspoons, seven grams of again that uh, SAF. I'm using a gold, you could use a red instant yeast. So in we go. And then I'm just using my hands. You could use you know, a whisk. Just mix everything together. And then you will need, of course, we have our cold pre-ferment. I just took it out of the fridge so it's nice and cold. And we also need two cups, 480 grams of, um, I like to use a filtered water. Again, we are using a cold water. Uh, my uh, kitchen is fairly warm. I'm up around, you know, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what, about 25 C. And that means my flour is at temperature. And we are going to mix this dough for quite a long time. And, which is, and I want my final dough to be at about room temperature, 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for 24C. So mixing, kneading that dough is going to warm it up. So that is why I am starting with cold water. Now, if you want to get really technical about this, because temperature is important, in the head note, I do have the actual formula that you can figure out what your, for your, you know, conditions, your room temperature, you, the, um, the temperature of your water. But I'm just going to tell you to make it simple, cold water. So I'm just going to pour that in. So I got all that mixed together. And then I'm going to take my pre-ferment and then I'm just going to use my thing here, to, my bench scraper to just cut it into small pieces. And I'm just going to add it right in with everything else. And as you can see here, we do have some butter. Now it adds, you know, nice texture, flavor to our bread, but we are going to add that a little later. So I got the water in there, then I've got the pre-ferment, and then I'm gonna try not to spill, and put all the flour. So what we're gonna do here, this is called, what we're gonna, the mixing method is called intensive mix, and that means we are going to need this for quite a while. So uh, we're going to first do it for five minutes on the lowest speed, like first speed on your mixer. And then we're going to turn it up to second speed on your mixer for anywhere between four to six minutes. And what you're looking for is a really nice smooth and elastic dough that will clear, you know, the, your bowl will be clean. And there's actually what is called a window test, which is your, I mean, a really good way to see if your dough is needed enough because I don't, you know, especially if you're starting, it's kind of like, did I need that long enough? I don't know. So I'm going to show that to you. So on your first speed for five minutes and then second speed, you know, we're, we're going to do between four and six minutes. You might want to stop at the four and then just check your dough. You might want to do this really slow at the beginning because it's a lot of uh, flour in there. Okay, we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, so 
what I've done is five minutes on first speed and about six minutes on second speed. And I don't know whether I said, but you do need to use your dough hook. And remember, there is on the site, the recipe, instructions. I got a head note, which tells you lots of information. So check that out along with watching the video. So I don't know whether you can see this. I'm going to take this dough is it cleans the bowl and it's really soft, satiny. It's very elastic. So what we're going to do, I mean, it looks done to me just looking at it. But you can do, like I said, what is called the window test. So you will need really wet hands. So I have some water. You can do this. Typically, I do it over the sink. And then just take a little bit of your dough. And then make sure your hands are wet. So we're going to take the dough, you can see, and we're just going to stretch it gently. Like, don't just work it. Gently kind of stretching it out. And what we want to do is get like a thin window. And the dough, sh if, if you find you're pulling this gently <laughs> and you can't get that nice window and, the, and your dough is kind of ripping, then you know that is one way you know you need to uh, knead it a little more. But if, see, it's not ripping yet and it's kind of stretching, this really nice stretchy dough. So I'm, I'm happy with this, season. see? It's getting thinner and thinner, and it's not ripping. See? Just keep. So that's, that's kind of what you're looking for. So that's a really good test for um, your dough. So now what we're going to do, we still have our, to add our butter. So our dough's at a good point. So what we're going to do is mainly just mix our dough on second speed until all this butter is incorporated. And again, you can do that window test again to make sure. And I find, you know, anywhere between three to five minutes on second speed. Okay, so. I did check this at about the three minute, and I did the window pane, the window test, and it's still, you know, the, when I stretched it, it was breaking still. So I did altogether beat this after I put in the butter five minutes. So, you know, depends on the speed of your mixer, how long you're going to have to knead it. So, but what we, we have at this point is, I mean, it's just smooth. It's kind of satiny smooth. A, a little sticky. It's not a really sticky dough. As you can see, you know, it's just a little. And I'm going to do, just to be sure, I'm going to do the window test, and I will be right back. Okay, so a nice window there. Very thin. It's not ripping. So we are done. So what I'm going to do, like, with the optimal temperature of your dough at this point is a room temperature, kind of around that 75, 77, you know, maybe like 24, 25C. So I am actually using my little instery. It's going to check. And we are actually a little warm. <laughs> Uh, 80 degrees, that's what, about 26, is that about 26C? So, and the reason for that is what we call friction temperature, and that's because, I, you know, you're from your machine or even your hands, you know, all that kneading does warm up the dough. So that is why I use cold water. If I used warm water, the temperature would even be warmer than that. And the reason you want the dough down around that room temperature is because we don't want it to proof or ferment too fast. If it, you know, we want it to almost double in size, but if, it, if our dough is too warm, then that's going to rise even faster. And then, you know, it takes time to develop the flavor. That's why we don't want our um, dough too warm because we don't want this to rise too fast. Just 
trying not to get too technical. But so that's why if you want in the head note on joybaking.com, the site, you can, um, if you want to kind of learn about that, I do have the formula so you can get the exact water temperature. So now what I have is a large bowl and I just, again, putting a little flavorless oil. And that is because we don't, as a, when we put the dough in there, we don't want it to stick to the bowl. And then, look at this. You can see, this is a very elastic dough. And because we beat it so much, we only have to let it proof or ferment for about an hour. It's not, if you watch the baguette, and we didn't need very much, and we had a long, we had a three hour um, first proofing, fermenting. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to put it in there. And then I'm just going to turn it over so that the top has a little oil on it so that way it doesn't dry out. And I'm just going to cover it with plastic wrap. And room temperature around 75 degrees, 24C. And I want it to almost double in size. And at the room temperature, that will take about an hour. So we'll see you back here then. Okay, so as you can see, our dough has risen you know, almost double. That took a little less than an hour because, as you remember, my dough was a little warmer than room temperature. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. Time is only kind of use that roughly because if your kitchen is a little warm or it's a little cool that time can vary so uh, what we want to do is what we're going to do now is divide our dough because this is going to make two loaves so put some flour on your counter if you don't have one of these little plastic scrapers these are great and they're very inexpensive so you might want to Although you can just use a spatula. So I'm, I'm going to turn upside down. So the bottom now becomes the top. And then we're going to flour that. Really nice dough. And then I'm just going to get rid of some of those air bubbles. And we're going to divide this in half. Now you can eyeball it or, no, I'm big on the scale. Um, so I'm going to divide it. Uh, for each loaf, 900 grams. So, like I said, either eyeball it or you can wait. So. so, not bad. A off, but trying to get on the scale here. I'm just going to take a little bit off here and put it on this one. So now what we're going to do is do like a pre-shaping. I'm going to shape it just into a round. We're going to let that rest for about 20, 30 minutes, and then we will do our final shaping. So just pat it down to get rid of all those air bubbles. And then I've just, you know, you could use, I'm using just a board here. You could use baking sheet, whatever, just flour it a bit. And then I'm just going to kind of gather the dough into the center, like so, press it down. And then I'm going to stretch the dough a little, not too much. That'll give us a little structure to our, and get rid of some of those air bubbles, especially if you have some big ones. So there we go. And then just put it on your board. And then I like to just flour the top just a little. Like you can see there's, we're going to need those really large ones. And then, again, nice dough to work with. Nice and soft. So again, just kind of gather it into the center. And so. And then I'm just going to cover it with plastic wrap and let it rest, like I said, 20, 30 minutes. Okay, so now we are ready to shape our sandwich bread. So, as you can see, nice and soft. It's 
what you're looking for. So again, let's take your bread and upside down. <clears throat> and then I'm going to kind of, there's a lot of big air bubbles, so we want to get rid of those. So just gently pat. Because otherwise, if you have really big air bubbles, and when you proof it, they're kind of going to pop them when you bake the bread, and then you're going to get a real wrinkly top. So you want to get rid of those real large ones. And you will need two loaf pans. As you can see, I've already formed one. And you can just lightly oil the inside of your pans, or I'm going to do the easy way here and just spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. Either way. So what you want is to form your loaf about the, the length of your uh, pan. So you can just kind of put it right there if you want to kind of use as a guide. So I just do it into like a rectangle first. It's different ways people have kind of shape them, but this is how I do it. I put it over to the center and then take this and kind of like an envelope and then Pat that down. Really nice, elastic, soft dough. And then I take this, this and put it into the center. And then I kind of seal it. You can see lots. Oh, beautiful dough. And then I just flip it over. And I want to make sure that bottom is sealed because if you don't seal it enough, it could open up as it's proofing and baking. We don't want that. So just kind of roll it back and forth and then try to get it, you know, roughly into the size of your pan. And then again, if you have any really large like air bubbles, just get rid of those. And then you want the seam side down in the center. So just that. Now, you know, you could, I have had this actually, if you roll, if you kind of work this dough too much, you can have it split. And that's kind of from over, getting a little too aggressive. So, you know, firm, but gentle touch. Okay, so it looks good. And you can kind of just spread it out there. Again, if you have any real large, pop those bubbles, and there we have it. What I like to do, because you put the plastic wrap over, and as your bread is rising, you don't want it sticking to your, to your plastic wrap. So what I do is just, you know, put a little flour on there. And now, so what we're going to do is let these rise until, uh, like, as you can see, this is about two-thirds full. That's about what you want in your pan. You want a little above your pan, almost doubled. So, you know, depending on how warm your kitchen is and how warm your dough, that can take between one and two hours. My kitchen is a little warm today. And so I find it takes about an hour. One thing is, if you do, like this will rise above your pan a bit. If you start to see the sides kind of mushrooming out, then that you know it is time to bake your bread. And if you're kind of, should I? It's always better to err on the side of underproofing your bread rather than overproofing. If, because you do get, we will get a little bit of an oven spring, which means when we put that, our bread into the oven, it will rise a little more. So if you're a little hesitant, always err on the side of under. So, so I find about an hour till it's a little above the pan, and we'll see you back here in a bit. About a half hour before you bake your bread, you want to preheat your oven. Uh, we're going to bake our bread at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. If you have a confection oven, or also known as a fan oven, you do want that setting turned on. Now, there's a couple of ways you can bake your bread. For me, I like a little bit of a crisscross on my sandwich bread. So what I'm going to do is actually like steam my bread for just when I first put it in, just for like a couple seconds. And how I do that is I'm going to throw just, I mean, about two, three ice cubes into a cast iron uh, frying pan that's on the bottom of my oven. 
if you prefer a softer crust to your sandwich bread, then you, then I wouldn't do this. But if you do want the, a little bit of a crisp crust, then just put a cast iron frying pan in the bottom of your oven when you preheat it so it gets nice and hot. And so we'll be back in a few minutes to bake our bread. So now we are ready to bake our sandwich uh, bread. As you can see, nice rise to it. So um, you want to bake them about 35 to 40 minutes there'll be a beautiful golden brown color and if you tap it it will sound hollow i am once i put the bread in like i said i like my crust like a little crisp so i am just three ice cubes into the bottom get a little bit of steam if you like a soft uh sandwich bread crust don't bother with that step so about 35 40 minutes Okay, so our white sandwich loaves are done. Don't they look gorgeous? Beautiful golden brown. Kind of tap them, they sound hollow. So uh, if you're the type that likes your, your uh, crust to be a little soft, what you can do at this point is to uh, brush the tops of your loaves with a little melted butter. With the added bonus, it adds some flavor. So I'm just gonna let these cool on a wire rack for just a few minutes and when I come back, I'm going to take them out of the pan. Okay, so it's just been a couple minutes, so I'm going to take it out of the pan. Now they should, if they're done enough, they should slide, and you did oil your pan enough, they should slide right out like that. And then it's going to be a little hot. So there we have it, our white sandwich bread. So I am going to, it's best, you know, to let your bread uh, cool down to room temperature before cutting. I know sometimes it's hard to do that. I even find that, and sometimes I want a, a warm slice. But we're gonna let these cool down, and when we come back, we will try. Okay, so I let the bread cool for a couple hours, so I like to use a serrated knife for this. It's easier, I find it easier to cut through it. And also, if you let it cool down, it's much easier to cut. If you try to cut it when it's still warm, and squash it. So there we have it. Isn't that gorgeous? The crust is, you know, it's cooled down so it's a little soft and oh, nice and spongy soft. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is great. I often serve it like along with supper and we just put a little butter on it and or as the name implies, this is a great bread for sandwiches. And you must try it in the morning for toast. A little butter and jam on it. Just try it. Oh. I really like how the outside crust is a little chewy and then it's so soft, kind of a little buttery. <laughs> it's just a wonderful bread. And you know, you can use it, not just regular toast, you could make French toast, you could make cinnamon toast. And then it stays soft, I find for about three days. And then one, you know, once it gets a little like stale, you can make bread pudding out of it. So, and it freezes beautifully, I mean, it's a great all-purpose bread, so try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.